Okay, here we are. We're getting back to the sword, and now we're going to take a closer look at how we build the hands. So, again, we take a little bit slower than I typically do. Things are still sped up, though. Uh, so I'll, I'll try to talk a little bit fast here. Uh, so I'm going to start off just by blocking in the, the hands, just like I would do with the body, which is some cubes. And uh, I'm going to also do the arms that way, just with some cylinders. I could also do tubes on the arms, uh, but cylinders, because of uh, the image I'm working off of, of these arms just kind of come in straight into the hands. All right, I'm going to remesh these cubes and then soften it up with the smooth brush and start building up a little bit of the, the muscle. Uh, I always think of the main muscles in the hands are, are kind of the thumb muscle and then the muscle under the pinky on the side. I'm sure there's some better, more anatomical names for them, but I just don't know them. Uh, it's not necessary that you know the names of them. You just need to know they're there. So I got that smoothed out. And to build the fingers, I'm gonna do that with a tube tool. The tube tool is really great for being able to kind of block in uh, fingers and get them all posed before you uh, finalize those. So if you click on the curve, uh, once you've built the, the tube, it adds points. If you click on a point that already exists, it'll sharpen that point. If you click it again, it'll, it'll round it out. And so, here I've made one, I've made one finger, posed it, duplicated it, and then just moved it down and formed the other fingers. And then from there, I kind of spin the model around back and forth until I'm really happy with the placement. You know, take a close look at your, your own hands. When you build hands, it's really easy reference, re really easy access. And to do the thumb, just the same approach as the fingers. And I'll fatten up the radius with the little yellow points that come off the first part of the tube. You can change the radius. And for the most part, I'm going with sharp curves, curve points at the bends of the fingers instead of curved ones. If this were more of a rubber hose look, I might use curved points, but the sharp just gives you really defined uh, joints. The other thing you, you'll see me do is I'll open up the topology menu and I'll increase the subdivisions. Uh, both the division X, which smooths kind of the, the facets around the tube, and then the subdivisions as a whole, which will smooth where the joints are. Here I'll go back to the main part of the hand and I'll use the clay buildup tool to build in the top parts of the knuckles and get that all smoothed out. If the geometry ever starts stretching or looking a little funny, I just, I remesh it and continue working from there, or I'll remesh at a higher resolution to smooth things out and work from there. And here, it's really a matter of just making that main hand form join up with those fingers in a way that looks really good before I ever end up combining them. Because once I combine them, there's really not much going back. It's not going to be easy to repose those fingers or the hand. So you really want to make sure you get that dialed in and you're happy with it before you do that. All right, now we're going to take a look at the second hand. And I've done the same thing. I've got a cube here that I've smoothed out. And it's really just rinse, repeat here. Taking time to pose the fingers. Again, I sharpen up by clicking on the curve points on the tube. And I get the joints where I need them. And then I pose out each finger after duplicating it. And once again, take a good look at your fingers and you'll see there's kind of a, a curve or a hierarchy of the ends of each finger, your pinky being the shortest and your middle finger being the longest. So I try to kind of pay attention to those as they wrap around the form of the sword. All right, I've got those posed in. And you know, always be, be turning your model around and around and around. Uh, it might look really good from one angle, but you never know. <laughs> so you, you need to make sure you're always turning it around, make sure it looks good from all angles. All right, and here I'm kind of curving that hand in so I can get the, the thumb the way I want it. And I'm switching to the, the two radius. If you click on the radius button on the tube, you can make the bottom part of the tube thicker. And so I'm doing that for the thumb. I've got a thicker base radius uh, than I do at the tip. 
And again, this radius is, uh, or radii can be adjusted with the little yellow dots that come out from the points at the end. And I believe if you click the radius one more time, you could actually edit a radius for every single curve point. It's not really necessary here. Uh, and really it's just the thumb that I want two different uh, radii on there. All right, so I'm happy with the fingers. So now I'm going in and I'm validating the tube, which commits it, and then I remesh it so I can start smoothing out. And then I'll, you'll see I'm using just simply the flatten tool to flatten in some fingernails, use the clay buildup tool to create some knuckle forms, and then just smooth things out. And I'll have to go th through that and rinse repeat on each of the fingers. You can see just how quickly though you can get those forms, especially the fingernail, just using that flatten tool. I also will use the, the flatten tool uh, a, a little bit around the ends of the fingers to smooth those. Sometimes the smooth tool just doesn't quite smooth enough and you'll see the flatten tool is a really easy way to kind of smooth out the, the ends of something that's sharp, you need to be more rounded. Right, and you may have seen I use the move tool uh, where the hand hits the fingers and trying to kind of arch that up for those middle fingers. And so here again, it's just a matter of just cleaning these up and adjusting it. I'll have to go through and do that same process on the other hand as soon as I finish this one. And, and once again, you want to get everything looking good before you merge it together. Eventually, we'll merge all these fingers together, but as soon as you do that, you're going to unfortunately lose the separation of each finger, which is why you want to make sure you can get it as good as you can before you really merge and uh, and commit those in, because it gets really hard to, to move and adjust the individual fingers once you've done that. You can see I added in an extra little curve point on that thumb to kind of kink out the final joint of the thumb. And that's really because I'm paying attention once again to a, a very specific drawing of this character and I'm just trying to match that look. And here I'm using the, the move tool to kind of fatten out the base of that thumb a little bit more, make it blend into the form of the hand. This is getting pretty close. I have to remesh the hand just to add a little bit more geometry. It was starting to look a little too faceted. So, uh, so I could smooth it out. Here I'm using the clay buildup tool just really defining those muscles. Once again, there's the, the big meat of the, the thumb muscle, and then there's it kind of pushes up against the muscle on the pinky. All right, just doing some tweaking on the arm, getting all things squared away, making sure all the forms flow into each other as best as they can. It'll be a little bit easier once they mesh together. Here I'm starting with the thumb. I'm meshing that together with the hand. And now I'm going in and just refining those curves and smoothing things out. So I'll do this probably one finger at a time rather than all together. It gives me a little bit more control as I go. So next we'll remesh the, this first finger, smooth it out, just work in that connection part. Now I'm doing the pinky working those knuckles and we do the middle finger and finally the ring finger you can see once I've meshed everything together it creates kind of a meshing between the fingers and so at this point I can't really separate those fingers very easily without having to go in and really do some surgery to cut them apart. Hopefully someday Nomad will add in polygroups, which is simple, similar to what we have in ZBrush or in Blender even, that helps you keep those parts separated even as you remesh. Now I'm even meshing the arm in with the hand. So at this point, it's all one form. And just continue to use the clay, flatten and smooth tool to really get the forms exactly the way I want them. All right, and now it's just rinse repeat on this next finger. Smooth it out, use the flatten tool to cut in a fingernail. 
it's really easy to get carried away. These are going to be cartoon hands, so really they don't need probably as much definition as I have here. And it's really easy to get carried away and work that in. But you just need to be mindful of the overall design of the sculpt. So, you know, be very intentional about where you're smoothing things and where we actually see the lumpy details. All right, just refining kind of the posing of the finger before I validate it and then, you know, which converts it to a mesh and then remesh things to work it in. So once again, just more of the same. Really with these hands, it's, it's not really clear who I'm, who I'm sculpting here. But again, this is part two of a larger series. My next video will be more like my other uh, sped up videos because I'm going to cover more or less the same stuff I've covered before when I do the rest of the body. I just really wanted to take some time to really show off how you do these hands because uh, because when you use the tube tool in Nomad, you can really get a good base to work from. And it's just kind of a, an interesting, unique f workflow to Nomad. I suppose you could use a similar workflow in other, other tools, but the tube tool is just really handy in Nomad and really love the way it's built. And so it's great for doing things like fingers here. So I'm spending a little bit more time here. And, you know, let me know in the comments, you know, what you think, if you want to see more videos that, that go into more detail on these process, or if, you, if you'd rather just see me sculpt something cool really fast, I just figured we'd try this out and see how you guys like it. And I ho hope it's of some use to you. So nothing really new here. I'm just working through the same process I did on the upper hand. I encourage you to really get comfortable with the way the tube tool works in Nomad. Just getting comfortable with how you switch to those curve points to sharp and to curve. And even sometimes I'll use the spline feature, which gives you even more of a curve that you can't get with just the curve points. So it really just takes some getting in and just experimenting, see what you like and how it works. Same with the radius features, all really handy. These same features are, are great for blocking in arms or tentacles or tails or, or whatever uh, sort of long bendy tube like things you might need <laughs> and here it's just really concerning myself with those main muscles you see with the thumb and the pinky once I've got that thumb meshed into the hand I can really work that and you know the webbing that connects from the thumb to the first finger to the index finger and how it just wraps around that sword form just getting that dialed in, looking right. And here I'll go one by one, just meshing the fingers into the hand, adding those knuckles with the clay buildup tool and smoothing things out. Got one more finger here. You can see once you mesh everything together, there's there's no turning back. All those fingers are now attached. Once again, I hope Nomad eventually addresses that with uh, maybe some poly groups or something, something of the sort, so we can remesh and still keep forms that are close together separate. And finally, I'll mesh the arm in with the hand. So I hope you like that. I'm getting to the end here. Uh, stay tuned and I'll have another video. It's going to be a, a sped up fast one that where I do the rest of this character. If you guys have any guesses who this character might be at this point, I'd love to hear them. I, again, I'm working off a very specific uh, piece of art, uh, which I'm not really showing. I feel like it kind of spoils it. Here you see the hands gripping this sword. Uh, I hope this tutorial was useful and uh, once again, let me know in the comments below uh, what you thought, what you got out of this, and if there's anything else you'd like to see in the future. Thank you guys. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you later.